What's up again everybody, there's a ton of new players coming to the game of Flesh and Blood, and rightfully so, it's a really fun game and it's kind of blowing up right now. So, if you're one of those new players, then I have the video for you. It's this one, like, spoiler alert, it's this one. There's going to be a ton of information for newer players, for players that are trying to get into the game in a bigger way, maybe than they were before, or if they're, like I said, if you're brand new, this is gonna be a wonderful video. There's gonna be cards at the top, there's gonna be links in the description. We're gonna talk about a lot of things that you can do to just get started in the game and to get connected to the community, that sort of stuff. So let's go. Okay, so let's break this down as if you have only ever heard of the game of Flesh and Blood and you actually haven't seen anyone play it, you know really nothing about it except for maybe you've seen some cards or maybe you've seen people talk about it on other channels. Let's start there. So if your question is how to actually go about getting into the game, the number one thing you should do, the very first thing that you should do is watch a how to play video. There are several of them out there. The most viewed one that I know of being the official how to play video from Flesh and Blood. It's up on their YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description. Um, it's like seven minutes long and it's a solid way to get a good taste for what the game kind of looks like. I will say that I also made a how to play video and I kind of went a little bit more in depth into some of the uh, interactions. Basically we talked about how a card looks and how you can read a card so there's a bit of card anatomy in there and how play passes back and forth. We dove in a little bit more. I think it's a really good way to learn how to play as well. Um, I kept it to like 14 minutes so it doesn't take forever to watch. Gives you a good taste as well. And there are other videos out there. I think there's a longer one uh, put out by, um, who, who put that video out? Team Covenant? Team Covenant put that video out? Team Covenant. So I'll link that one in the description. Team Covenant put out like a really longer form video and they have a ton of gameplay as well. So number one, you should watch a how to play video just to get an idea of what it looks like to play the game. Number two, you should watch actual gameplay of the game being played. So you watch how the game actually plays, and then you watch people play the game. Why is this important? Well, it is an absolutely great way to see if you like the gameplay loop of Flesh and Blood. If you like the way that you're going to draw up at the end of your turn, and you're gonna start your turn with a plan, and you're gonna execute that plan to the best of your ability, and uh, kind of pivot off of what your opponent does on their turn, or what they're doing during your own turn. If you like the way that it looks, then that will tell you going forward if you want to really invest in this in one way, shape, or form. Plus, by watching gameplay, you can kind of experience what different formats look like. And when you can see the different formats, then you can see what you might like or gravitate towards. Like for me, I really enjoy the Blitz format, which is a more compact format. And we'll talk about those later. But by being able to watch people play the game, you can come to your own conclusions before you actually give it a try yourself. I would recommend, if you're looking to do this, I would highly recommend going back, like I said a moment ago, to the Legend Story Studios Flesh and Blood YouTube channel and watch their eight hour long stream of Blitz games. They recently celebrated their one year anniversary of the game being out, and while they were celebrating, or I guess I should say, and by celebrating that, or in the process of celebrating, I don't know how I would say that. Nevertheless, they streamed for eight hours and they brought a ton of people in and they had them play exhibition match after exhibition match of Blitz games. So the games go by pretty quick. The um, high level play is accentuated by the wonderful commentary that they all put on themselves. So I highly recommend going and checking that out. I should also say you can find some really great intro gameplay over at channelfireball.com with Luis Scott Vargas. He plays with his brother, they sit down, they play with the Ira like welcome decks which is like the base deck which is a great way to learn how to play they sit down and they play it back and forth against each other and uh, they recorded the whole thing and talked through the whole thing another great way to watch some gameplay Speaking of the Ira Welcome deck, if you can get your hands on one or two of these bad boys, these Ira Welcome decks, I would highly recommend it. These are 30 card decks. They are specifically designed to help you learn the game at a nice, easy pace. You're supposed to play one of these against your opponent who's playing one of these, whoever you want to learn the game with. 
Um, these are technically free and they're supposed to come from like a local game store um, that has ordered the product. But your local game store may not actually have any of these or maybe, and this is possible, this is very possible, maybe your local game store doesn't actually know about the game yet or hasn't chosen to, to dive in yet. So this brings me to another point and I want to talk about one of the videos that I posted recently and a wonderful comment that was left by a wonderful commenter who said this and I think he is 100% correct and I didn't mention that in this video and I'm kind of kicking myself I didn't know why I didn't think about that you should 100% check with your local game store to see if they carry this game and you should very much consider purchasing things from your local game store if they have the product or if they have the interest in ordering it for you. Why? Well, let's see. We're in the middle of a pandemic and small businesses could probably use our help. So you should probably consider going ahead and ordering something through a local game store if you have the ability. Now, if they don't want to carry it or if they've never heard of it and they don't want to take the plunge, that's fine too. That's their prerogative. And there are some wonderful stores that you can buy product from both sealed and in single form and we'll talk about those in a little bit in this video nevertheless you should always check with them first and while you're checking with them see if you can pick up a couple of these ira crimson haze welcome decks now if you can't get your hands on an ira crimson haze welcome deck then the very next best thing and perhaps this is even better i'm not sure it's really up to you are one of these these are hero decks and these hero decks were released only for the heroes from Welcome to Wraith, which is the first set. I do believe they are going to be printing more of these as time goes on with the release of Unlimited, but don't quote me on that, I could be wrong. Nevertheless, what these are, are pre-con 60 card decks based around the hero that you see on the front of them. So there's a Guardian, there's a Brute, there's a Warrior, and there is a character that I'm forgetting which is embarrassing, and this part will be cut from the video, or will it? I don't know. What's the fourth one? Oh, it's a ninja. Why did I blank on Katsu? I am so stupid. Nevertheless, those are the four that you can buy. I originally bought a warrior and a guardian, and this is actually how I taught myself how the, uh, basically how the game works, and how the gameplay loop feels. How it feels to start your hand with four cards, to play several of them, or all of them, to draw back up after, you know, playing at actions and uh, playing attacks and pitching cards from my hand, putting those on the bottom. I literally just picked up a couple of these and I just messed around with them. I fiddled with them. If you have something that you would want to play with, then picking up two of these is a great next step after playing the uh, Ira Crimson Haze Welcome deck uh, so that you can play different play styles, different archetypes, different classes, and kind of find out which you like or which you gravitate towards. So that would be the next step after playing with the Ira Crimson Haze decks. Okay, so let's take it one step further. Let's assume that you've tried to get your hands on an Ira Crimson Haze deck, or maybe you have, and let's assume that you've messed around or thought about messing around with the hero decks, but maybe you couldn't find one, or you're ready to try something in a digital form. Maybe you wanna just try a lot of different cards or play different archetypes in a digital form before you really know what you're diving into with regards to different classes. So, you can actually do this over on Tabletop Simulator. Tabletop Simulator is a game game on Steam, it runs anywhere between $5 and $15, and uh, you can buy it and play card games and board games of a huge variety on Tabletop Simulator with other players that you just set up like an old school server and people can hop on. It feels like very like late 90s, early 2000s in all the best ways. It makes my heart a little bit happy. It reminds me of playing like old StarCraft where you'd set up a room or like Halo CE. Oh man, Halo Combat Evolved. Okay, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked, nevertheless. Okay, so you set up a room and uh, you can play card games essentially. So Flesh and Blood has a, a mod or a downloadable pack for free that you can grab and then play along with someone. Or if you know someone that you'd like to sit down and play with, of which there are many people in the community on a variety of different social media platforms that do this, and you can literally play any and every card, you can craft any and every deck that you want to 
on this little table and you can just go and play and try the game out. I 100% recommend this. I can't say enough how easy it is to just go about setting this up and if you need help figuring out how to work it, the community's great, they'll talk you through it, they'll sit down and play a game with you. And you can try out a variety of different decks, a variety of different archetypes and classes and find one that you like. And this is a great way to do that digitally before you dive in. Now on a personal note, I will say that I like TTS, but I much prefer playing this game in physical card format. And I've seen a lot of people say that um, the game suffers because it doesn't have a like an official digital format. And to a certain degree, I understand where they're coming from, but personally, this game shines in physical card format. The way that it plays, the way that it looks, the way that it feels, the, the motions that you go through are all so much easier and more fun and more interesting to do when you're playing the physical card game. So if you actually do end up getting your hands on the cards, I highly recommend trying and playing via webcam if you have a webcam. Now I'm not going to go into the can of worms about how to set all of this up because I actually made a video on that exact subject. So if you'd like to see more info on how to play on TTS or how to play over a webcam, check out the video in the card up there right about now. And I think in order to do either of these things most effectively, you're going to need a community. And there is a wonderful community out there playing this game. You can find them over on Facebook groups of which I've linked several in the description. You can find them on discord groups of which I've linked several in the description as well go get acquainted with some of those people they I've found them very welcoming very warm people they're awesome so go and plug yourself into that community so that you can play games with them so that they can teach you um, so you can ask questions if you're confused about something anything like that this is the perfect place to do that okay so let's say you've now decided to go ahead and jump in and play and collect the game you've committed yourself but you're not sure where you should begin. Well, I think the first place that you should go after you've gone through the whole process of trying the game out is decide on a class that you either like the style of or maybe you like the archetypes that are within that class. Maybe you just like the flavor of it and pick that class and start collecting and playing that class and then branch out from there. So look through the classes and look through the archetypes and find something that resonates with you. For example, if you are like me, then maybe you like to draw a lot of cards and play a lot of cards each turn. There's an archetype and there's a class that fits that. Maybe you just like to slam one giant thing down and hit really, really hard. There's an archetype for that. Maybe you like to really control your opponent and punish them for not doing the right things at the right time. There are things that fit that as well. So find a class that you really resonate with and start there, start collecting there and go on from there. So speaking of classes, let's go ahead and talk about each of the classes. So starting with Welcome to Wraith, the four heroes in the very first set of which they're releasing the unlimited version very, very soon. We have Warrior, which is like a punishing mid-range kind of a class plays a couple of attacks a turn it has some really cool like ha gotcha moments that you can play along with you have brute which hits generally pretty hard but really likes to take away your opponent's options with blocking with hand kind of things um, guardian which is literally just a giant dude with a hammer that hits you in the face one time and it hurts a lot and it really punishes you if you can't block everything and then you have ninja which is a guy who just cuts you to pieces over and over and over again plays a lot of little things makes you think about how you actually want to block and if you can take a little bit of damage uh, versus letting them have some crazy combo that's about to go off. Very a combo heavy class. Of those four heroes, I made a video for each of them. I'll put all of those videos in this description so that you can go back and watch a little spotlight on each of those heroes. And uh, I think they cover the kind of general gist of the archetypes and the class pretty well. Now in the second set, Arcane Rising, we got the wizard, which is like this kind of little squishy guy, but he can do things that no other class can. Namely, he can play things on your opponent's turn, and he can literally kill you on your opponent's turn. He deals damage all direct. He doesn't really try to attack at all with physical damage. He literally just deals direct damage and puts your opponent on a clock. Very, very dangerous. You have uh, Rune Blade, which has sort of a combination of physical attacks and these cool rune chant tokens that the class creates, which deal direct burn damage when they get exploded or popped. So you can kind of threaten your opponent with physical damage and with direct damage. We 
we have ranger which shoots a lot of arrows or could shoot just like one or two big arrows but reloads cards into the arsenal which is a zone that you can play cards from uh, kind of does some little tricky things with cycling through the deck in that way and then you have mechanologist who's a steampunk robot chick she's not really a robot she's just uh, like armored up with a bunch of steampunk stuff she uses items a lot to uh, do different things that other classes can't do and she shoots you in the face with a pistol up really a lot yeah so again after you pick one of these classes to start investing in which is what I recommend to do first is pick a class and invest in that class and really try to angle towards that class I would do one of two things one I would start buying singles for that class specifically or two if you're like me this is what I did I would buy a box related to what set that card or that class I should say came from so for example if you like warrior as a class that originated in the very first set of the game welcome to Wraith so go and find a welcome to Wraith unlimited box and purchase that and start pulling packs from that. Now, that's less optimal if you're really only trying to build that only that one deck because that's the only class you're interested in. But the advantage of buying a box is that you're opening some cards from that class, but you're also opening cards from other classes and perhaps maybe you also like the idea of playing as a ninja or trying that down the line. By picking up a box, you get tools for both classes that are in that set. So if you really like Brute and Guardian as play styles or as archetypes or classes, then buying a box makes a ton of sense versus buying literally just the singles for one of those decks. This is something that you should consider. Do you want to only play one class because that appeals to you? Or do you have this idea of, I could maybe play this class for a little bit and then I want to try that other class. If that's the case, instead of buying singles right away, maybe you buy a box and then put together singles based on uh, what you really get uh, into as you play these suboptimal lists and decks. I really do want to say that both options are totally fine. If you go the singles route and just buy 100% singles, it will probably just straight up be cheaper like it's gonna be a cheaper process to just buy all of the singles rather than buying the uh, full boxes okay buying the boxes also provides you the opportunity to test out and mess around with sealed formats or draft formats okay both have their pros both have their cons obviously buying boxes is going to be more expensive buying singles doesn't allow you the flexibility of trying out new classes like that um, so they both have pros and cons. Consider which one uh, fits your, I guess, play style or fits your wants or desires, I should say, the best. So if you're looking for deals or places to buy boxes, sealed boxes, or even sealed cases for that matter, check out the video up there in the card above me. It's a video I released fairly recently talking about the Unlimited set and talking about where you can get your hands on some decent deals with regards to Unlimited boxes. And as far as Unlimited versus Alpha Print runs on these first two sets go, uh, depends really on whether or not you want to just invest long term and keep the box sealed. If so, you buy Alpha Print, which is really, really exploding right now. The prices are ridiculous. Um, if you plan to play the game, if you're going to buy a box, immediately open it up and start a collection. I would wait a few days for Unlimited to drop. If you're looking for online resources to buy singles, there are a couple of different options. In fact, what you should really do after checking the description for a couple of those options, you should really hit the like and the subscribe button on this video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel because I will be uploading a dedicated video just talking about singles, sites, and singles that you can purchase uh, in like a couple of days. So what I would highly recommend doing is hit subscribe and hit the little bell so that it notifies you when that video goes live because it is on the way. I should also say that if you enjoyed this video or if you learned something or if you got anything out of it, if you like flesh and blood content or if you like anything that I'm making on this channel, hitting the like and the subscribe button really helps the channel grow. In fact, by hitting the like button, by leaving a comment down below and just by talking to other people in the comments section, you literally gain control of the YouTube algorithm and you push videos that you like up that algorithm so more people see them. So if you want this video to be shown to more people, one way to do that would be to like and to comment. So if you enjoyed yourself or you learned something from this video, please consider doing that. And as always, thanks for watching.